As a landscape photographer, one of the biggest frustrations you might be dealing with is sensor dust. And sensor dust is a normal fact of life because as you take pictures, you expose your camera sensor to different environments. Now in this section, we'll be talking about how to keep your camera gear clean in addition to your camera sensor. Now, before we get into the actual process of camera gear cleaning, let me give you a few tips. And these tips are based on my personal observations of things that I see in the field. As simple as it sounds when it comes to changing lenses, turns out that a lot of photographers just don't do it right. And that results in a lot of sensor dust. Let me show you an example. Now, when you grab your camera and you have your lens mounted, a lot of people end up just changing lenses like this. And in many cases, I've actually seen photographers change lenses as the camera is pointing up. Now, look at this. This is actually a problem in itself because what's happening is if you have dust in the air, that dust is just falling down right into the camera because it's exposed. Now, with these cameras, we have a mirror in between. So it might not sound as bad as on something like a mirrorless camera that has a sensor directly exposed. However, it's still an issue because all of that dust is going to end up inside the camera chamber and eventually it's going to make it into the camera sensor. What do you do? In this case, instead of just taking the lens and disconnecting it with the camera pointing up or to the side, if I simply point the camera down as I detach and attach lenses, it will save me a lot of hassle. And in many cases, it will result in less sensor dust. Another basic tip is to try to avoid changing lenses in dusty and windy conditions in the first place. Let me go ahead and put this down. Now, when you shoot in windy conditions, you just need to make sure that you don't have the camera facing the wind. For example, if I'm shooting in such conditions and I have my camera mounted on a tripod and the wind is blowing right into the camera, then it's best to detach the camera, maybe have your back facing the wind and then change the lens. This way you can avoid all the dust and debris potentially ending up inside your camera chamber. Another thing you can do is if you have your car parked nearby is simply go to it in order to change the lens. Now, in this case, what I personally do is I sit in the car. I make sure not to turn the car on and to avoid using air conditioning and heater because that will recirculate the air that you have in the car. Just wait a little bit for the dust to settle in and change lenses. And that alone can help a lot. Lastly, it's a good idea to get in the habit of changing lenses as quick as possible. So if you're out shooting in the field, don't worry about exposing the rear part of your lens. The priority is with the camera. So swap out lenses as quickly as possible because it's much easier to clean the rear element of the lens later on than it is to clean the camera in the field. Now that we went over some tips, let's go ahead and dive into the actual process of cleaning your camera gear and your camera sensor. Imagine you just came back from a trip and your camera gear is covered in dust and your sensor is very dirty. How do you deal with that? Well, you don't actually start with your sensor because there are so many other elements within your camera that might have dust in them that if you clean your sensor first, all of that dust can eventually come back into the sensor and whatever you've done is pretty much useless. So the very first thing that I personally do is clear the exterior of the camera and the lenses. So in this case, if I'm going to go with the lens, what I do is I basically inspect the lens real quick. And um, in all these between these um, rubber elements right here, there might be dust specks or potentially even sand, especially if I'm shooting in a sandy environment. What I'll do is I'll use a simple method, which is using something like a toothbrush. Even you just need something that you can put in between and quickly clean it. So if you have some sort of a brush and there are lots of different brushes out there, um, you can just do that very easily. So I'll do that. I'll just remove all of that. And then I'll do the same thing on my camera while the lens is still attached because I do not want all of that dust to go everywhere. So as after I go through that first step of cleaning the camera and the lens, then I start cleaning the actual lens. At this time, I'll be using the body cap. So I'll close the front of the camera because I do not want at that time potential other dust to get into the camera chamber. So what I'll do is I'll basically basically take the lens hood off and then cleans the lens hood, hood by itself, then you'll be surprised how much dirt there is on the rear or the front uh, cap of the lens. And what I'll do is I'll go through that and use that same brush to clean it off. And I'll close and open the cap to make sure that everything that's in there is cleaned off. The next step is to actually clean the front element and the rear element. Now, 
one thing to keep in mind is that the front element of the lens is actually not as important as the rear element. So as you go through the cleaning process, uh, you just pay attention to the rear element more than you do to the front. And that's because the light hits the front of the element of the lens from different angles. And even if you have a little bit of dust on it, it might not be too bad. As long as you don't have like fingerprints or some other big uh, elements in there that might actually hurt your image quality. So as you go through the process, again, I go through and make sure that the front is cleaned, the rear is cleaned really well. Now some lenses can be very tricky to clean and because the rear element might be actually inside the lens. And what you can do is you can actually change the focus. Now on this lens, as you can see, the rear element just stays in place as I focus or zoom. Uh, and as a prime lens, obviously I can't zoom, but on some zoom lenses, as you twist the zoom ring, you'll see that there might be some uh, elements inside the lens moving and including the rear element of the lens. So just change the focus or the zoom and see where the rear element comes closer to the mount. And once it's in that position, then you clean it because you do not want to put your fingers inside the lens. Once you clean the front and the rear elements of the lens, the next step is to clean the lens mount. And the reason why you wanna do that is because don't forget that the lens attaches to the camera and probably the area that it gathers the most dust is right at that spot. Now, the nice thing is some lenses have rubber gaskets. Like this Nikon in my hands has a rubber gasket right in that area. And what that does is it prevents that extra dust that gathers in that area from making its way through that mount into the camera chamber and which helps a lot. So the very first thing that I do is clean that rubber gasket. And if you don't have one, just start cleaning the mount. Now, another thing to keep in mind is that initially when you get a lens, there's gonna be a little bit of oil in this area, which is a very normal thing. So as you start cleaning that area around the, the lens mount, you'll realize that it's going to be probably very dark in color, even some um, oil that's gonna be coming off from it. So if you do decide to use something like a microfiber cloth, just be aware that once you start cleaning this area, it's probably not a good idea to reuse that same microfiber cloth to clean the front element or the real element element of the lens. The last part of the lens that might need cleaning is the area that contains the electronic contacts that let your lens communicate with your camera. Now this area you often don't need to worry about, but every once in a while your camera might give you an error that indicates there is a communication problem with the lens. And if you see something like that, it might be a good idea to gently wipe that area and clean it off as well as the other contacts area on the camera. And by doing so, you might get rid of that error. Now that we're done with the lens, let's go ahead and move to the camera body. I'm gonna go ahead and put this guy away. Now, when you start with the camera body, you go through a very similar process as with the lens. You start with the exterior of the camera. Just use that same brush and make sure that you inspect the whole camera and brush off anything that might not be part of the camera. So if you go through the process, you will see that there will be things that are stuck maybe around the buttons, the dials. Make sure that you go through all of that and clean it. After you go through that thorough cleaning, the next step then is to actually start working on the mount. So let's talk about that next. Now, when it comes to cleaning the mount, you'll discover that it's probably going to be as filthy as the one on your lens. Let me show you what I mean. So I'm just gonna grab this microfiber cloth. And what you do is you start from the exterior side, the one that's actually facing out, because that's the part that is probably going to have the most amount of dust and debris. So once you go through that, just like that, and you might need to do it several times, look at that. There's a lot of dirt just on the outside. Now, once you go through that process, the next step is to actually clean the mount itself. And this one, you can also repeat several times. And as you can see, it gets really dirty. After that, we can put the microfiber cloth away because we're done with that because we're gonna move on to cleaning the inside of the camera and the chamber. Now, everything that I showed you so far applies to all cameras, whether they're DSLR or mirrorless, but there are specific things that you need to pay attention to as you clean DSLR cameras. Let me explain why. First of all, on a DSLR camera, you obviously have a mirror and the chamber is going to be larger typically on a DSLR than on a mirrorless camera. That means that you have to take some extra precautions when you start cleaning the chamber of the camera. Now, what I personally do on my Nikon cameras is I use a rocket blower just like this one and they're really cheap and they're something that I will not leave home without. What I'll do is I'll flip the camera this time upside down just like this 
and I put it at a 45 degree angle because the idea is to clean the bottom chamber area of the camera. And what I'll do is I'll use the brush and I simply do this to clean that area. Now you have to be careful. You don't want to be poking this all the way into the camera because you might touch the mirror and the mirror is very, very sensitive. I'll talk about that next. But the idea is to clean that bottom area because as you change lenses, you will discover that the area that contains probably the most amount of dirt and debris is going to be that bottom of the camera. From here, the next step is to inspect the mirror. Now the mirror is something that is very delicate as I said earlier and you never want to apply any chemicals and you want to be extremely careful when you use any sort of brush because you do not want to damage that surface. Uh, the reason why is because that mirror actually transmits light past the mirror. There's some of that light that goes through the mirror into a secondary mirror. Especially that area can be very sensitive so you have to be very careful about how you do it. Never use any chemicals, never use any adhesives or anything like that. The idea here is to try to be very light and if you don't need to clean it, don't clean it. But you, if you absolutely have to, then the, the best idea is to use a very soft brush and with a soft brush put it at that angle. In this case, instead of putting it upside down, it might be easier to just uh, angle it this way and then just go and start using that brush to very gently get rid of all, that, all of that dust sitting on the mirror. Now, if you look through the viewfinder and you see dust specks, just keep in mind that those dust specks on a DSLR are not going to be on the sensor, which means if you take pictures, they're not going to show up in the images. However, you're probably still annoyed by them and you want to clean them off. Well, there are only two areas where those dust specks could be sitting. The first one is the one that you just cleaned, which is the mirror. And the second one is going to be right above the mirror, the area that receives the light when the light is reflected off the mirror. And to clean that area, you do use the same brush and just go through the similar brush strokes, just be very gentle. And if you clean that area and the mirror well, you will see that the viewfinder will look pristine. And that's the main difference between a DSLR and a mirrorless camera. On a mirrorless camera, there's obviously no mirror, so you don't have to worry about cleaning it. And you don't have to worry about cleaning the viewfinder either. However, if you see dust inside the electronic viewfinder, it means that the dust is sitting on the sensor. And if you take pictures, those dust specks will show up in images as well. So now that we're done with cleaning the inside chamber of the camera and the lens mount, let's go ahead and talk about the process of cleaning the sensor itself. As you can tell, we went ahead and changed our setting just so that you could see exactly what I'm doing. Now, before I go through the process of cleaning the camera sensor, I'd like to talk about some of the products that are available on the market today. Now, before you commit to something like a wet cleaning solution, it's best that you start with something very basic, which is that same rocket blower that I showed you earlier. With a rocket blower, the idea is simple. You're going to use it to try to blow off any dust that might be sitting loose on the sensor. Now, there are cases where the rocket blower does a great job. And in fact, in many cases, you'll find that it does a phenomenal job and you don't even have to worry about anything else. However, there will be cases where the dust is not going to be removed by the rocket blower or there might be oil on the sensor. And for that, you need a more deep cleaning solution. Aside from the rocket blower, the next step up would be to use something like a sensor brush. Now the sensor brush works very differently because it actually physically touches the sensor. And the idea here is to use a switch here, which then causes the brush to spin like that. And then once it gathers the static to touch the sensor and hopefully any dust specks that are sitting loose on the sensor will be transferred onto the brush because of the static. And then you can use that same rocket blower to hopefully get rid of that dust from the brush. Now, I started using this a while ago and then I stopped using it in one particular case where I found a huge disadvantage to any sensor brush, which is if you have a sensor that has oil instead of dust specks, the, not only does it end up transferring that oil all over the sensor, but it also contaminates the brush. And when I was shooting in the field once, I used the brush thinking that I had dust and ended up with oil everywhere. And I had to go back and, and find a different solution to make it work. So just keep this in mind. If you have, especially if you have a brand new camera that might have uh, end up putting oil on the sensor, this may not be a good idea. 
Now the next product you might want to try which actually works better than the sensor brush is the sensor gel stick. And the idea here is quite simple. You've got a gel on top of a stick and the gel is sticky. That's its quality. So as you clean the sensor, you physically touch the sensor or the surface of the sensor and whatever dust or other debris you might have on the sensor transfers on to the gel part. And like I said, this product works really well. Now there are situations where the sensor gel stick might not or even that same brush might not be able to clean the sensor, especially if you have something like an oil spot. Now in those situations, the only solution is to use a wet cleaning solution. Now with wet cleaning, the idea is to use a liquid that you put on the surface of a swab, something that looks like this. And once you do that, you use the swap to clean the surface of the sensor. While doing that, you will realize that it will actually get rid of, especially if the chemical is really good, it will get rid of any oil that's sitting on the sensor as well as the dust specks. The only problem with wet cleaning and one of the reasons why people try to avoid it is because not only does it sound scary that you're actually putting some liquid on the sensor, but also because it can leave some residue. And as we go through the process of cleaning, I'll show you exactly how you can get rid of that residue while cleaning the sensor. Now there are plenty of liquid cleaning solutions for sensors, but I personally rely on products sold by photographic solutions. And I have here in front of me the Eclipse E2. This is an older version. Now there are newer versions of the same liquid cleaning solution. And this is something that I resort to if I absolutely have to wet clean my sensor. Now, as you can see, I actually have two bottles in here. The first bottle says E2 and it says it is for sensors on the description, while this one is more generic. This is the one that I use to clean lenses. So it's a very big difference as you shop for a liquid cleaning solution, make sure that you pick one that is specifically designed for sensors because the last thing you want to do is put any chemical that might deteriorate either the coating on the sensor or might potentially even damage the sensor. So far, I've been using the word sensor a lot and it's important to mention that you're not physically touching your sensor as you go through the cleaning process. You're actually touching something called a filter stack that sits in front of your sensor. Now, this doesn't mean that you shouldn't be careful as you go through the cleaning process because if you do end up damaging your filter stack, you're going to still have to send the camera to the manufacturer and that might cost a lot of money because your camera might have to be disassembled and reassembled. Now that we've gone over different cleaning products and methods, the next step is to find out if your sensor is dirty or not. Now, while you can use something like a sensor loop to be able to do that, the easier way is to simply use your lens. What you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and mount the lens on your camera. Then make sure that you have a fully charged battery because once we start cleaning the camera sensor, you will need that fully charged battery. And what you're going to do is you're going to set the camera to aperture priority mode. Okay. And once you do that, the idea is to stop down the lens to the smallest possible aperture. And what that's going to do, it's going to clearly reveal if you have any sensor dust. Now keep in mind that sensor dust or oil is going to sit in exactly the same spot on your sensor. So as you take pictures, you will see them appearing in that same spot. And that's very easy to do with this method. So once I have my camera set to, and on this lens, it would be F16. I just need to find a white area. And this table right here with a white area is perfect for that. Now, as I do that, I need to also make sure that my ISO is set to the lowest level. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and set it to ISO 64. And that's the base ISO of this camera. Again, it doesn't really matter. I could set it to 100 and 200, but don't worry to, uh, about setting it up to a very high level, because if you do that, then you might see too much noise, which preve might prevent you from seeing the sensor specs. So what I'm going to do is at F16, my camera is telling me that it's going to be around a maybe one or two second exposure. And as I do this, you don't need to worry about camera vibration or anything like that. In fact, what I personally like doing is just point it towards a white area. And as I take a picture, I'm going to simply rotate the camera like that so that I'm reducing the chance of seeing any ridges or anything like that on the surface that I'm photographing. So I'm going to go ahead and set the camera to uh, manual. Uh, focus so that I could do this very quick and I'm going to take a shot and that's it. 
as I took that shot, as you heard, it was about one second or so of exposure time and that doesn't matter. The next step for me is to play back that image, zoom in all the way to 100% and literally scan from the top left corner all the way to the bottom right corner of the sensor. As you can see in this case, I actually have quite a bit of dust on the sensor and those are showing up pretty dark, especially in the edges of the sensor. And that's the most common area and unfortunately the most difficult area to clean. But we'll go through the different cleaning methods and hopefully we'll make this sensor spot free. At this point, I'm ready to clean the camera sensor. So I'm gonna go ahead and detach the lens by turning the camera off first and setting it on the table. And what I'm gonna do is turn it back on, go to the menu and under setup menu, I'm gonna find lock mirror up for cleaning. Now, if you have a different DSLR from a different manufacturer other than Nikon, it might be in a different location, but the name is going to be very similar. And the idea is to take that mirror and raise it and have it locked in that position until I'm done cleaning the sensor. Now, if you're shooting with a mirrorless camera, you don't have to go through this process because there's nothing that you need to raise and you could even clean the camera with the camera being completely off and the battery removed. So I'm gonna go ahead and click OK and okay one more time and now the camera is warning me that if I release the shutter button that is going to lock up the mirror and as you can see that's exactly what happens. Now before I do any cleaning as I said before I'm gonna use a rocket blower and my first line of defense is to try to remove anything loose that's sitting on the sensor. So with the camera pointed down just like this, I'm going to bring it close enough, but not all the way into the chamber because I do not want to accidentally touch the, the sensor with the tip of this rocket blower. I'm simply going to blow off anything that might be there. And just by doing that blowing off, it hopefully whatever was there hopefully is now coming down and it's not going to be on the sensor. So that's my first line of defense. Again, if I were to do this normally, I would be putting the lens back, setting that same, uh, and in this case, it's still set to F16 and it's probably going to be a second exposure. Uh, and I'm going to take one picture and re-inspect the sensor. And if I go through and I find, if I find any more dust specks on the sensor, then I know that I need to resort to different cleaning method. But if the sensor is clean at this point, there's nothing you need to do. So let's go ahead and take a shot. And as I play back the image, zoom in. Unfortunately, looks like the blower didn't do much and there's still plenty of dust on the sensor and some of that dust might be even oil. So the next step is to repeat the process that we went through earlier, which is turn off the camera, detach the lens and go through menu, setup menu, lock mirror up and release the shutter. I'm gonna go ahead and set the camera down because the next line of defense is to use a sensor, sensor gel stick and if that doesn't work, we're going to do the wet cleaning method. All right, let's go ahead and grab the sensor gel stick, remove the cap. And what I'm gonna do at this point is I'm going to start touching the sensor with the top surface area of the gel stick in vertical motion. And as I go through one corner of the sensor all the way to the other side of the sensor, I need to make sure that I do this very carefully. You do not want to be pushing this too much into the sensor and you do not want to be barely touching it because the whole surface of the gel stick needs to touch the sensor. All right, let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna start from the top left side of the sensor, which in this case is the bottom right side of the camera. And something important to keep in mind as I do this is that the bottom side of the camera as you clean the sensor is actually the top of the picture. So if you see a particular dust speck that's annoying you and you do not want to clean the entire sensor, if you know that it's on top of the frame, all you have to do is clean the bottom side of the sensor and hopefully you can remove that without having to clean the whole area. But in this case, once I'm done, I now have all of that dust hopefully sitting on top of this gel stick. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use now a, another product that comes with the sensor gel stick and it's called sticky paper, which is going to transfer whatever I've got here on the paper that's actually stickier than the gel stick. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm just going to set it down like this. And we're now 
transferring all of that dust back on that paper. After I do that, I'm probably just gonna run it one more time, just in case, to make sure that whatever is left, and this time I'm going to hopefully get closer to those corners, which are always tough to clean. And as you can see, I'm going through the entire sensor. All right, so at this point, I'm very hopeful that the sensor is now spotless, which I'm going to turn the camera off at this point, mount the lens, and we're going to do exactly what we did earlier, which is take a picture. Let's go ahead and do that. And if we play the image back, we can see that the sensor for the most part is now pretty clean, but there are a couple of spots in here which are tough to remove. And I don't know what they are. Those might be dust specks that are just tough to remove or it could be oil. But I'm not going to worry about it too much because this camera hasn't been cleaned in a while. So even before I started using the sensor gel stick, I knew that I would most likely have to resort to wet cleaning. Now let's go ahead and discuss wet cleaning. Let's go ahead and do the same thing we did earlier. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the camera off, detach the lens, turn it on, go to menu, lock mirror for cleaning, start and release the shutter. Okay, so now with the wet cleaning method, there are a couple of important things that I need to point out. First of all, there will be different size swaps that you will be getting for different sensors. Now, in this case, I have three swaps right here. I'm just going to grab one of them. As you can see, they're actually in sealed packaging, and they should be because this is this needs to be spotless. This needs to be very, very clean because that's what you're gonna be using to clean your camera sensor. The very first thing that I always do, no matter what packaging it arrives in, is clean the top surface area with a blower. So I'm gonna do that because there might be something else on it, maybe a few dust specks or so, which I do not want to transfer back on the sensor. Now I'm gonna use that Eclipse E2 liquid solution and as I hold this, I'm just going to transfer just one drop. Just one drop is enough. And just look at, uh, at the um, swap from the side and you'll see that the liquid is going to spread throughout the swap. I'm gonna wait a little bit, okay? Because I do not want to start touching the sensor as the liquid is too liquidy at this point. Basically, I don't want it to be too wet because wetness leaves residue and that's not what I want. So maybe wait for about five, six seconds or so. And at this point, I'm gonna grab the camera. I'm gonna start from the top left corner, swipe to the right side, bring it down and swipe the opposite way. Now, as I do this, it's important to point out that this, this swap has two sides to it, obviously. As I go through this motion, hopefully I'm capturing all of that dust and oil on one side of the swap. And as I switch, I'm going to change the tilt angle this way so that the other side is going to get uh, the oil or dust on the other side. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna start from the left, go all the way to the right, bring it down, change the angle, and I'm gonna to have to lift it straight up. Now, after I do this, there are a couple of ways for me to check whether what I've done is good or not which I can use a sensor loop for, which would be easier because I can turn on the light, bring it down, and if I see any residue or other problems, I would know right away. If I don't have a sensor loop, unfortunately, the only other way for me is to continue doing what I've been doing earlier, which is swap, uh, put the lens on, take a picture, see what's happening, then go through the process again. Now, one of the biggest frustrations that a lot of photographers face when they use the wet cleaning method is how many times it takes to get the sensor to look spotless, which is very difficult, to be honest. In one try, you most likely won't be able to clean that sensor, especially if you have any oil on it. So in this case, I just did it once, and I'll probably end up using it multiple swabs just to be able to clean that sensor fully, but once I do that, I need to check with a lens and see if I have any problems. So let's go ahead and go through that process real quick. And as I look at the image, it looks like 
it's a lot of stuff is gone but I also see now even more dust on some parts of the sensor and that's kind of the unfortunate thing that you run into with a wet cleaning solution because you might end up making things worse in this case for example and when that happens don't be frustrated because the wet cleaning solution is not an ideal solution it's not something that you can just use once and be happy with it because you might have to actually waste a few of those swaps before the sensor is going to look acceptable and for that reason I personally find the combination of the sensor gel stick and the wet cleaning solution to be ideal in those environments because what I can do is I can use the wet cleaning method get this the sensor clean and remove any potential oil from the sensor but but once I'm done then use the sensor gel stick to pick up whatever is left by the wet cleaning method at this point I'm going to go ahead and use the sensor gel stick again because I want to pick up whatever is left by the wet cleaning solution so let's go ahead and do that once again I'm going just from the top left and navigating down to the bottom of the sensor all right I'm gonna go ahead and turn the camera off mount the lens and hopefully this time the sensor is going to be spotless and as I can already tell it looks really good I don't see that many spots in here there are a couple of spots here and there on the edges of the frame but they're so minor even at f16 they're just really tiny and I'm not going to worry about them finally I'm done cleaning the sensor and looking back at the image I'm actually pretty happy with the result and one thing to keep in mind as you go through the cleaning process you might see tiny specks of dust at the very edges of the frame doesn't mean that you have to repeat the process over and over again until the sensor is spotless well in my case if I only see it at f16 which is a very small aperture that I'm probably not going to use that much in the field anyway and it's only at the very extreme edges of the frame I'm not gonna worry about it but if I saw something bigger which is going to be more visible at larger apertures then I might have to repeat the process based on everything you've seen so far the process of cleaning your camera sensor might seem complicated and in some ways it is for that reason some people prefer not to do it themselves and instead prefer to send it to a service center for cleaning now I personally like to invest my time in proper cleaning because if I'm stuck somewhere on the road where I cannot be without a camera I would rather have these tools on hand so that I can do the cleaning myself the worst thing that I can end up with is coming back with pictures where every single image has dust all over it and I cannot imagine the time that I would need to spend sitting through and trying to use a healing brush and getting rid of all those dust specks in an image especially it can be complicated if I do something like panoramas as landscape photographers dirty sensors is what we have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis so my personal recommendation would be to invest your time to learn how to clean the sensors yourself